Good day, everyone. Time to check out the Tropical Update. I'll try not to make this too lengthy, but folks, there's a whole lot going on, and everybody really needs to pay attention. I'm talking all up and down the coast of the United States. If you live on the coastal areas, you need to be aware of what's happening. First off, let's go to Gordon right here. Right now, Gordon has 30 mile per hour winds. Barometric pressure, 1,008 millibars, 32.3 north, 90.2 west, moving northwest at 14 miles per hour. Then we come to Florence, which is a major hurricane now, with winds of 125 miles per hour. She is a Category 3. The minimum central pressure, 957 millibars, located 22.0 north, 45.7 west, moving northwest at 13 miles per hour. And, of course, we have disturbance number one. The shower activity is associated with a broad area of low pressure centered a couple hundred miles south-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. It has become better organized since yesterday, and environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for the additional development and a tropical depression is expected to form by the end of this week while the system moves west-northwest across the tropical Atlantic. It does have a 90-day percent chance of forming in five days. Let's click right here right quick and see what these storms actually look like. You can see down here disturbance number one is still disorganized. Florence is going to town. Folks, do not take your guards down. I'll leave it at that. It's still a ways out. Nobody really knows exactly where it's going to go right now. But we're going to have to watch this thing. I'm just telling you, if you live on the East Coast. And we can see that Gordon now has started to diminish a little bit in its organization. Still a big rainmaker. Still taking a lot of rain with it as it travels. You know, I don't even think the National Hurricane Center has a good grip on Florence yet, but this is what I've been waiting for, the 11 a.m. discussion from the National Hurricane Center. I won't read it all, but some of it I'm going to because it's very important. Florence has continued to strengthen, as we have seen, and the hurricane has a compact, central, dense Overcast with cold cloud tops completely encircling a clear, well-defined eye. Okay? Now, the in initial intensity is set at 110 knots as a blend of the numbers from the models that shows up above, of course, and with Florence having become a major hurricane earlier this morning. Now, the winds they're going to die down a little in the days to come, but it's going to remain a hurricane no matter what. This is what it's looking like. This is what they're saying, and this is what it's looking like to me, okay? Now, this is what I really want to know about is the track and what they're saying. The track forecast has its challenges, as you can see. They really don't know, like none of the rest of us, all we can do is kind of estimate on what things are looking like. Now, the initial motion estimate is northwestward at around 11 knots. It now appears that stronger upper-level ridging may take shape to the north of Florence over the next few days, forcing the hurricane to turn back toward the west-northwest from around 36 to 72 hours out. After 72 hours, a break in the ridge should allow Florence to turn back toward the northwest, but the bulk of the track models have trended westward since yesterday. So see, they're slipping that in there. It's like, we're telling you what we think it should do, but we're not quite sure because all the models have it going a different way. So we just got to watch it. It's really hard to track. I'm telling you now. Now, in light of these trends, the National Hurricane Center official track forecast has been shifted westward on days four and five, but not quite as far as the various model consensus aids. 
Now, it is worth stressing. This is the National Hurricane Center's words, not mine. It is worth stressing that there is still a significant amount of spread among the GFS and the European Ensemble members by the end of the forecast period. And just like the initially forecast, I'm sorry, the phone rang. Now, back to what I was saying. It is worth stressing that there is still a significant amount of spread among the GFS and the European Ensemble members by the end of the forecast period. And just like the intensity forecast, the track forecast is of low confidence. So they're saying their track forecast is of low confidence. It's just what they think it may be. And down below, you can see 125 mile per hour. Now it's going to remain that way for at least the next 12 hours. Then it should start to decay some. But low as it's going to get is 105, according to the National Hurricane Center. And then it's going to start to be on the rise again with intensity. Okay, here is the National Hurricane Center's tracking map. As you can see, major hurricane, major hurricane through tomorrow morning at least. And then it drops back, starts to drop back down just to be a Category 2 and 1 hurricane throughout the period. And this is their forecast track, now nudging it more towards Bermuda. Now let's take a quick look at the intensity guidance models. All of the different intensity guidance models for Hurricane Florence. I would not be surprised that this doesn't, wherever it goes, be a Category 3. Some even have it as a Category 4. I was looking at some of the wind gust in this thing. A few hours, like 120 to 160, 80 hours out. And some of the wind gusts was 148 miles per hour. Okay. Some of just the regular sustained winds always showed 74 miles per hour and above. And by the way, there's 86 days left in hurricane season this year. So there's a, a look at that. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, no, none of us, not even the National Hurricane Center has a crystal ball to see what's going on. Just like with Tropical Storm Gordon, they put up the hurricane watch because it was so close. Just like I said days and days ago, it's so close. But I didn't think it would have time to get quite to that Category 1, which it didn't. But <laughs> look at all the damage it's done. People have flooded. One child has died in Pensacola, Florida. You don't mess with any of these storms. Okay, I've got the TVCM model set up over here. We're looking at Gordon over here right now. You can see it's still got lots of rain that is dragging along with it. The rain's going to continue for a while. And it does have the system, even as just the low pressure moving on up, going on up to around areas of Chicago, right on up through Canada. Same very specific track that it took the whole time. So this is a pretty doggone good model, folks, okay? We will move it on over now. This is Florence right here. The TVCN has it. You can see the National Hurricane Center's chart right here. They have it up here. The TVCN has it a little further down to the south. And in the end, it has it moving up and outward and up this way. Now, it could, it could go to North Carolina area, South Carolina, Delaware, New Jersey. We will have to wait and see. And who knows, maybe this track will be the right track and it goes on out. Here we're going to look at the Euro model. We're going to look at the GFS model. We're going to see what's happening. This is around 1 p.m. this afternoon. As you can see, the remnants of Gordon are still hanging around out parts of Mississippi and Alabama, still receiving rain from it. But this is Florence, so let's not waste a lot of time and go through day by day, but we will start out, say, Monday around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and I'll make this bigger as I go along. 
first we will check out the European model. This is the European model. Here is Florence. Here is disturbance number one, and it's looking like we'll have disturbance number two by Monday afternoon or Tuesday by the least. Then we have another one that's going to be coming off over here. How about that? Something else. So this is Monday around 4 on the Euro. Let's check out the GFS. We'll click it right over. And it has it just about in the same area. So they are showing a little confidence in each other at this time. We go back to the year, uh, European model. I like the European model. It's usually 90% right with only a 10% error. The GFS is good. Do not get me wrong. It's good for like three days at a time. But once it gets past that three days when it's tracking things like tropical storms and hurricanes, it usually does not agree with the European model. So, and when they do start to agree, you better stand up and look and pay attention. We'll move on up to Tuesday around 7 a.m. in the morning. This will be on the 11th. The euro has it right here. Let's make this bigger and see what this barometric pressure is because I know it is very... 28.89. It could be a whole lot worse, okay? So we will move it up a little bit more. And this is around 8 p.m. Now it is 28 point, that's either 5 or 6. I think it's 28.6. Look, this thing is intensifying like crazy right now. Do you understand? Here we have disturbance 1, which will still, it still doesn't look like it's quite got its act together, but the one coming off behind it has. It's beginning to get isobars. This one's still a little bit low. Let's check the GFS. They may not be in agreement now. They, or they may. So, no, nope, they're still in agreement. GFS model, and it's got it with more isobars, with more intensification. So, let's go back to the European model. I want to show you guys this so you see the difference, okay? We'll hop on Wednesday around 8 a.m. in the morning. The European model has it now 28.15. My goodness, if you have problems where you hurt, you're going to know it. I'm already feeling it, okay? That's another sign I have. I'm like a human barometer. It don't even have to get but so close to me, if I, but I'll know something is coming about anywhere from five to seven days before it gets here. So here we go with the European model closing in now on the South Carolina and the North Carolina coast. Getting a little bit closer, we can see this is still fairly disorganized, but this one's getting better organized all the time. So let's just check out some of the wind in this right now. That's 111 knots, okay? 111 knots. What is that in miles per hour? That's around 127 mile per hour wind gust at this point, okay? I'm not going to switch just to regular sustained winds back and forth to all that because it'll take too long because I want to switch with the two different models. So this is around 8 a.m. Wednesday. Let's go ahead and move up to around... 12 hours from there, 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening. You can see it is oh so much closer. Barometric pressure 28.35 in it now. And I think this may be a little change in the GFS now. But it has it even as a bigger storm. Do you see what I'm saying? And it has it moving more northerly. So that means, you know, right now at this point, people, I would say, you know, everybody up around New Jersey and around Long Island, all the way down, they, if you live on the coast, even if you do not get a direct hit, you're probably going to know it's out there, okay? If it takes the GFS model, run. At this point, I like to stay with my TVCN run, 
because it combines the GFS and the Euro along with the others. And this is the Euro model here. So then we'll move up to Thursday morning, getting very much closer. And where this finally ends up on the European model is around Georgetown, South Carolina. So from Myrtle Beach areas and all you guys down here, I didn't want to click that, for all you guys down here on the islands, you need to be paying strict attention, okay? Because no matter how, even if this doesn't look like a big, big bad storm, there's still some wind in it and there's rain, 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 rain. So you guys pay really good attention to this, okay? The eye looks like it may have started to try to get over land at this point. So we'll bring it up some. And we'll see what it says right quick. And you can see, look, it's the wind's going to be coming up and in and around. So it's going to fill up. The rivers, the ditches, the tributaries, any low-lying areas, you got, you're going to get, your water is going to get higher, especially at time of high tides, it's going to remain that way. I remember one time, just a few years ago, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, Hurricane Matthew was a Category 4 hurricane. It was way out here off of my coast. I didn't have electricity for three days, didn't have hardly any rain, but we had water buildup and flooding like crazy. So, just because you don't get rain, just because you don't get a lot of bad wind, if this storm builds to what it looks like it could build to, hopefully it will not, everybody needs to pay attention. Okay, so we'll make this just a little bit bigger for you so you can see not have to take my word for it as it looks like it's still offshore just a tad here we'll move it on over here but somewhere right along in here let's do it again right quick and of course you have to remember this can change we all know it can change and this looks like it may have changed since the last time I actually checked it. This is around 10 a.m. Thursday. We'll go up to around 4 p.m. Thursday. It's beginning the eye right below Myrtle Beach. All of this, all of these areas, people. Faithful, North Carolina, you're going to get some wind and rain from this. But from Wilmington southward, all the way down to Charleston, even Savannah. This is wind. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be that bad down here. We'll check out around Savannah. And let's just see what the winds are. 30 knots. So that's, that, that's more than 30 knots. I mean, that's more than 30 miles per hour. So you can see how this storm is going to stretch out with the isobars. Look at that. I can't stress it enough not to let your guard down, okay? Look at that. One of these isobars is all going all the way through the panhandle of Florida and through the mid sections of Florida as it comes around. Let's hope and pray this storm does not build to this significance. Now, at the very same time, on Thursday the 13th at 4 p.m., we're taking a look at the GFS and see it has it going northward. So you guys up here need to be aware of what's going on, all right? Okay, this is the MyFox Hurricane Euro model, which is up to date, just like what I just showed you, except it goes just a little bit farther. So I want to show you that also, but I want to emphasize all of this can change. It doesn't mean it's road in stone. It's still a ways out but by i'd say this weekend no later than mo this coming monday we should have a pretty good idea of whether this thing is going to miss land altogether or whether it's going to come closer to the coast 
or whether it will actually come inland and make landfall anywhere. So, listen to your local forecast, check with the National Hurricane Center, and I'll be sure and post updates for you and tell you what I think, okay? Now, of course, this is set on the 5th, so we will, let's click on through and see where this thing goes completely according to the Euro model. And you can see the other two developments right here, and you can follow along with those also. And it looks like we got another one coming off. All right, here we go. This is on the 13th. Now, the Euro has it coming inland in South Carolina, looking like, on the 14th. And on the 15th, then it starts to take that northerly turn and come up through the Piedmont of North Carolina. So, with all that said and done, that's your tropical update. Keep your eyes, your ears open, Florence. <laughs> Florence is something to be reckoned with, my friend. So I think Florence may be the big hurricane everybody has to look out for this hurricane season. I hope I hope it does not do anything. I hope it turns. So here's Bermuda, that speck. I hope it turns and goes out up here, but I really, honestly, do not think it is at this time. I may change my tune if I do. I'll be sure and say, hey, I've changed my tune. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe. Click the bell. Check out the email notifications. And make sure you do everything you can. I can't help if YouTube don't get them out to you. But make sure you've done everything on your part to get weather news, forecast updates, and tropical updates. Okay? I'll be sure and get them out for you. In the meantime, share this with your family and friends. And all I am saying is anybody that lives from right around in here, I'll even I'll, I'll start off on the Massachusetts borderline and come all the way down to here. Just around the north very, very, very northern part of Florida. Everybody needs to watch this storm. Because we really can't tell exactly what it's going to do yet. We've got a good idea and something to kind of watch and go by, but it can change. So, share this with everybody. Make sure everybody's aware of everything. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Everything you do for me, have a good day and a safe day. And peace, love, and kindness to all.